So, <clears throat> here is a Marshall MG100 HDFX. Um, so, this uh, friend, I can't think if he got given it or paid pennies for it. Anyway, it's been sat around another friend's house where it got dumped for ages. And he said he kept going on about having a amp head. I don't know if I could rip the inners out of it and put something else in it. So I, I didn't quite hear him originally first time. I thought it was just an empty amp head. And now it turns out this was still actually in it. So when I was around the other week and I was just like, well, what's wrong with it? And he says, well, the lad who brought it says it just does nothing. Turns it on, does nothing. Well, opened it up and straight away... There's no fuse in it, so I just nicked a 13 amp fuse out of something, put it in, and you could hear the transformer instantly growling its ass off. Pulled the fuse out, so I was looking, I was like, well, where's the amp in this amp? And after a bit of digging around, finally found it, and there's a little TDA7293 on the tiniest of heat sinks. And the first thing I thought when I looked at that was that he sinks no way beer big enough and anyway after researching it yeah these just blow up like constantly all you have to do is think about playing a guitar and they break so anyway I was on my motorbike so I just took uh, this little bit of the amp bit out of the amp so yes yeah, it's, it's basically this little board just here and took it home soldered a new TDA 7293 into it and you know I wasn't overly hopeful because you generally find when anything transistor blows up it takes down everything upstream of it it can until you sort of start getting to high resistance or like current limited parts so I put a new chip amp in it uh, went back around there today plugged it in at least it's not growling and trying to blow the fuse now but yeah zero output from it so I'm going to have to have a poke around now Looking at the data sheet, these things do have a standby circuit on them. And there seems to be something... I've, I've managed to find a very bare-bones schematic, which doesn't seem to show no way near enough stuff. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just try and see if the amp itself is actually powering up. And if it isn't, then it's a case of have a probe around to try and find out what connects to where on here and see if I can't get some life out of it so yeah let's uh, let's give it a go and see what we get right so yeah the standby pins being held low and ooh, six minutes of battery anyway so yeah the standby pin is being held low and the so this is the standby circuit here anyway it should momentarily as a C76 charges it should pull the um, basically the base of the transistor will only be held high until that's charged or something along those lines anyway yeah so TR2 is the transistor which is active whilst the standby circuits in operation and if I measure the emitter and collector of TR2 I'm just getting a short circuit so yeah that's the problem is this transistor is shorted inside so board out change that and hopefully all will be good in the world which is odd it should short because it seems to have 33k behind it well without pulling the board apart it's hard to say what exactly caused what <laughs> so yeah um we shall see, we shall see, shan't we? So anyway, yeah, get that changed now and see what happens. It turns out it wasn't that transistor, because I just pulled that transistor out and I tested it on the bench and all was good in the world. Um, I'm going to put this a second, I've not got this board screwed back in yet. Ah, better, shift it over a bit. Yes, it turns out two things, there is, no resistor from the collector of TR2, there's a junction at TR2 and D14, from the collector of DR14 it connects to one of the terminals of 
um, TR2 collector to D14 monitor terminals. That goes straight to the muting circuit on the TDA 7293, is it? Whatever the chip is, anyway. Because there's no resistor in series with that, even though it's, it's like an almost zero current circuit, it just needs to see a voltage on it. When the chip's blown, it's fed upstream to that, it's tried to basically pull a very high voltage on that diode and it's shorted out and that diode was actually shorted internal. That diode basically sits in parallel with the emitter and collector of TR2. So all this chip needs is like even 10k, anything like that, it would have took huge shunt current and turn it into microamperes of current, milliamperes of current depending on the voltage. Oh, why would you skimp on one resistor like that? Um, and if you had that resistor in there you wouldn't, you wouldn't need this diode. Uh, that's just really confusing. Oh well. Anyway, so yes, if I probe the standby pin now, so when I turn the amp on you can see the voltage climbing and somewhere around 5 volts there the amp will have kicked into life now so yeah all for the sake of a resistor I don't know sometimes it just gets really confusing interesting someone's been in here before this 5 volt regulator I'll show you in a second um, <clears throat> so if I flip the board over I am unplugged, yep, everything's discharged, yep, right, so you've got to pull these wires off to get the board out, you've got to take the DSP board off here to get to this screw, there's a DSP board, this DSP board, and here's a, it's a see you next Tuesday to get out, it really is, you've got to undo all the screws on the front of every single one of these pots, Obviously with everything unplugged, never ever work on stuff with it plugged in. But yes. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Do you see that? That's not factory standard. Someone soldered a new 5 volt regulator in here. Now, I've not studied the schematic overly well, to any great length. I've found both sides of it now. But this 5 volt regulator is nothing to do with this chip side of things at all. However, when you have a quick look at the schematic, it kind of looks like the output of the 5 volt regulator is, yeah, sorry, this 5 volt reg here, it kind of looks like the output of that's going into the standby circuit and stuff, but it isn't. The, 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 what the standby circuit runs on is what's feeding into this reg. And I'm kind of wondering, the fact someone's been in here before and not actually found the fault, I think, I'm going to guess, they've had a look at the schematic, was getting the 12 volts, because I did it, when I first started probing around, I'm like, hang on a minute, I'm getting 12 volts on these resistors, there's a 5 volt regulator there, but no, it's the 12 volts, that feeds into the 5 volt. So I'm thinking that they changed this regulator, thinking that might be the problem, and the amp never fired back into life. And they did no more because you can see there's all the flux on the board as well there. Yeah, no, it's this little, this teeny tiny Zena diode. Um, it might be in there maybe to limit the amount of voltage rise across that transistor or something as this standby circuit voltage climbs. But at the end of the day, a small resistor in series with this output, when this had blown, it wouldn't have took that out. But yeah, Marshall for you, fantastic quads. You can see that. I mean, yeah, you put a VAT chip on a heatsink that big, you're clearly not going for engineering excellence there, are you? But so I'm going to go through my stash of Zener diodes because I have like hundreds of them and find the value equivalent to what was on here and change it, and all is good. Hopefully, all is good. I don't own a guitar and I don't play a guitar, but I can stick my fingers on the input leads and make it buzz. Yes. Anyway, tonight's video is brought to you by Single Malt Whiskey. Because working on electronics whilst intoxicated is an excellent idea. Mm. Anyway, crack on. Hey, <clears throat> there we go. Zener diode installed and 
You see here for one side, it's clamping the voltage to 7.85 volts. Um, I've just put an 8.2 volt zener in it. Uh, having a quick look at the data sheet, I've not again, I've not spent hours reading it, but when I had a quick scan through the data sheet and found the bit on the mute pins, the note I found just said limited by supply voltage. So yeah. <clears throat> As far as I can see, that, that pin can be free to drift up to whatever amount it wants to. Should we have a look? See what the data sheet says. TDA 7293. So it gives us a, like a, an operation, how it operates. Should we see what it says? So right, yeah, the sequence that's recommended during the on-off transients is shown in figure 8. That was what I just showed on the screen. Um, I've just lost a bit on reading. Right, so the application of figure 9. Oh no, sorry, that was figure 5, not figure 8. The application of figure 9 shows a possibility of seeing only one command for both standby and mute function on both pins. Yeah. So yeah, the last bit was kind of irrelevant, but there's a new and a standby pin. On both pins, the maximum applicable range corresponds to the operating supply voltage. So in other words, that pin, seeing as the supply voltage being applied to the each power rail, so it's the positive one we're going to be concerned with here because the mute pin has to go positive with respect to zero V. So, 40.9 volts, so essentially that pin can rise up happily to 40.9 volts, yet yeah, they, they put a xenodiode, if they haven't bothered with a xenodiode, they put a bloody resistor in there. Anyway, still it meant my friend got himself a very cheap, if not free amplifier, because whoever tried to fix it was unable to get their head around what was going on with it, and yeah. Um, which is really odd that they would have changed that regulator and not changed a massive burnt out chip that sat just there. That is a strange one, but yeah, now, yeah that's a big point actually, that bit I was on about earlier it would only make sense if they'd already changed this, why someone put a new... I mean, that thing's running ice cold. There's no way that would have ever gotten hot enough to have broken. And judging by the amount of dust on this chip, this amp has not had a lot of use. And you know, just the general condition, the front plate, there's no scratched off. You know, people when they do controls, they generally push them right in and you get scratches around there. There's very little damage to the head itself. You can see there's soddle dust in here, there's soddle dust on this heatsink. I don't think this amp's had a great deal of use at all before it decided to go boom. Yeah, and the question is why did someone come in here and put a new 5 volt regulator in when... Uh, who knows, I can only be guessing can't I? You can speculate till the cows come home but we've got very little chance of ever getting it right. So anyway, back to my um, Glenfiddich. I don't particularly... I'm not particularly keen on that stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have an Isla. Smoked. I like the smoky taste. Uh, I just called in the one shop, the cop next door to it was shut already. Jesus, I'm caught up on my t-shirt in my pocket somehow. The uh, cop next door to it was shut, so the one stop it was, and all they had in, in the range of single malts was a Tamna Valin, I think that's a single malt, it was about 35 quid, and they had this half bottle of Glenfiddich for 20. So I've gone for the Glenfiddich. So anyway, yeah, appears to be working. I said I can't. There's not a lot else I can do apart from making it do some buzzomatic stuff. But I've had enough for one night. The alcohol is starting to kick in. I'm not going to lie. So it's time for me to go and binge watch stuff on Netflix as it is half eleven. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching and uh, catch you again.